Welcome back to the Aim With Speed video library. Today we are shooting the last of the one rail bank shots. Today we are looking at shooting long cross side. So here are my numbers, two through 1.5 plus 0.3 goes to diamond three through 1.8 plus 0.3 goes to diamond four through 2.1. And then this shot actually is only for a kick shot that I'm showing here. Five plus 0.2 goes through 2.3. The speed window from diamond two is only about 0.1 in either direction, but from three and four, I find it's a little further about 0.2. Let's try it from diamond three. So our medium speed shot should be through 1.8. Our fast speed shot puts us through diamond two. And our slow speed shot is approximately 1.6. Here is the shot chart. We've got diamonds two, three, and four as the reliable lines of aim, the track lines that can actually pocket a ball long cross side. Of course, I actually showed you from diamond five as well as a kick shot, but we'll actually take a deeper look at the kicking numbers later in the video. Before we get any further, I want to talk about where this shot falls on our priority levels. If you're not familiar with that, in my Aim With Speed manual, I categorize all 25 bank shots into their priority level, basically how important it is for you to learn them and how often you're going to use them. And this is quite a difficult shot. In fact, I had originally given it category level two, which is sort of the secondary level shot, but as I shoot it more and more often, I've actually relegated it to category three. It seems like a shot that's pretty easy, but it is just really much harder than it looks. Let's take a second to look at why this is such a difficult shot. In general, the side pockets are actually preferred shooting straight on compared to the corner pockets because the side pockets are wider. We have more than five inches on most tables, whereas the corner pockets are actually less than five inches. So there's more room for error when you shoot straight on to a side pocket. But here's the problem. As you approach this angle here, as it getting steeper and steeper, the effective pocket size gets smaller because when you aim at this, you can see no longer do I have five inches to work with. I actually have only a smaller margin of error on each side. And eventually you start actually having to shoot not into the center of the pocket, you actually have to bank it off the side of the rail here, which is pretty tricky. And it's why most players end up shooting this shot quite soft. You can't shoot this shot hard and have it still work. It's going to end up coming right back at you. Or if it just does make it, it will actually rattle two rails and come out. And people think of the effective limit being one and a half diamonds from that same rail. So people will say, well, this is the steepest possible you can shoot this shot. And there's a lot of merit to that. But consider now when you apply those theories to shooting long cross side, we end up with a couple problems. The first shot in this pattern I think is reliable is diamond two through 1.5. Although on my shot chart, sometimes I've had a shooting from diamond one, there's just not enough space here to be consistent. And I think this pattern in terms of reliability starts from two through 1.5. So now just consider if we shoot this shot, the very beginning of this pattern is starting to narrow that effective pocket size, making it quite difficult to hit. And if you were to shoot to the theoretical limit, let's say, I don't know, let's just say that was the line for the theoretical limit. We know shooting from the theoretical limit, we have to shoot soft. Well, what does that mean? If this ball is moving at a soft pace, it's going to pick up soft speed rail action, which means it's going to open that rebound angle with a bit of bend. So this is not gonna go if you hit it soft. So, okay, well, can you hit it fast? No, because it's not gonna go in. So we end up with a problem. We cannot shoot the, to the theoretical limit using a bank shot because of the slow speed rail action that will happen. So our theoretical limit for the bank shot on this pattern is closer to this sort of area here, which is that four through 2.1 pattern. Now the goal of the aim with speed system is always to give you the lines of aim that will pocket the ball as a bank shot. But hopefully it's clear that because of the trajectory, the sort of steep angle that you end up at, we end up with a very small effective pocket size, making this a very difficult shot to actually pocket. And while I do actually shoot this shot as a bank shot from time to time, I find far more often I use these numbers as I try to kick a ball along the side rail, including trying to pocket a ball in the side pocket. 
Hopefully it's obvious that if I have a ball in the jaws, I'm gonna aim at the number as described in the shot chart. So for example, four through 2.1, I can kick at this ball using medium speed. As usual, be really careful not to put any unintended English on a ball for a kick shot, but this ball should pocket medium speed. However, what if I were trying to kick at a ball not in the jaws, but a ball that was on the rail from here up to the rail that I'm kicking on? What if I was trying to kick at a ball there. Now let me give you a little bit of theory for this for you to wrap your head around. I'm gonna divide up the distance here proportionally compared to the distance here. So for example, if I'm at shooting four through 2.1, this is my baseline for this starting point. But if I were to cut this in half, so for example, this would be maybe around here, I would also expect to land at a spot that's about half of this. So half of this should match, a relatively speaking, half of this. So if I shoot halfway here, well here's the second diamond there, it should be somewhere there. Now let's do this as a kicking shot. So I'm actually gonna push this ball down. So if I hit this generally that way, I've nailed it. Well, so from four through 2.1, cut this distance in half, that's gonna effectively cut that distance somewhat in half. Medium speed still. And if I were to kick closer to this way, let's cut this distance, we'll say let's cut this just a quarter off of this. So we're about two, so somewhere from about 1.5, that should send me into that diamond because we're about a quarter of the distance, shooting medium speed, four through about that location there, medium speed proportionally should make the hit. Kicking a ball between the side pocket and the corner pocket is gonna be a little bit more complex mathematically. However, this is the moment, maybe for the first time, you're gonna see the bigger picture of the aim with speed system and what I'm trying to do in the map of the entire table. Because the numbers from this pattern are gonna to start to overlap with the numbers from the long cross corner pattern. Let me show you. So I know from my previous video that from four through 1.4 medium speed, this is the shot that I would use to kick a ball in that pocket there. So if four through 1.4 pockets a ball in the corner as a kick shot and four through 2.1 pockets a ball on the side, now I need to take mentally and just think about those two parameters. Okay, 2.1, 1.4. Now this represents the gap between those two pockets. So let's say I wanted to shoot at something that was approximately at the second diamond, of course coming from this angle, I'm thinking about hitting here to pocket it in the corner. What if I were trying to kick that ball from diamond four, I would have to go halfway between 1.4 and 2.1, which is like, what is that, seven, so one, two, three and a half, somewhere around here, medium speed. I'm gonna hit somewhere around coming into the trajectory of that second diamond and maybe have a shot to make the 13. What if I wasn't trying to kick at a ball on the rail, I was trying to kick a ball that's off the rail a bit, but I wanna kick it into the side pocket. Now consider here, if I shoot my four through 2.1 line, I'm gonna hit this side of the 13, but I actually need to hit that side of the 13, which would be more like this trajectory, where I'm shooting, what is this, about a third of the distance between those two pockets? Something like that. So now what that means is, I would need to think about my four line from 2.1, and I would have to think back to my 1.4 line. I need to cheat this way by a third. So that would be about maybe here. One final note, I limit my shot charts to the shots that actually bank in. So that's from two, three, and four. So that's what's on my shot chart. But if you think about kicking, we can actually continue that pattern to kick all the way to the end rail. And I'll give you some of those numbers just here. So if this is plus three, plus three, to five we do plus two, plus two, plus one, and plus one. That brings us for a kick shot from diamond eight to about 2.7 down the end rail.
Now, I've always envisioned the aimless speed bank shot system to be primarily about pocketing balls on a bank shot as opposed to a kicking system. But I realized in making this video, many of you are going to want that extra kicking information embedded into the shot chart. So that's what I'm going to do. Take a look at it here. This is the new shot chart that's going to be updated by the time I post this video. If you have already downloaded it, it is now available at poolometry.com for you to download again. I apologize for that inconvenience, but I'm always going to bring you the most accurate information I can, even if it means updating my files.